Please join me with a moment of silence for all those we have lost during this time of pandemic, for all, those that, for all that we have lost, and for all those still suffering. The 13th century German Dominican theologian, philosopher, preacher, and mystic, Meister Eichhardt, once said, if the only prayer you ever say in your entire life is thank you, it will be enough. Thank you for parents, for friends, for mentors, instructors, benefactors, our graduates, and our beloved University of Rochester. Commence, therefore, dear friends, for it has also been said, it is simply impossible to be both unhappy and thankful at the same time. In every day, in all that we do, and all that we become, gracious God, may we seek to be thankful first and always, and in so doing, discover hope, discover joy, and discover divine wisdom. Amen. I invite you to please be seated. Good morning. On behalf of the administration, the faculty, and staff at the University of Rochester, I would like to welcome you to the Arts, Sciences, and Engineering and School of Medicine and Dentistry Master's Commencement Ceremony. This ceremony is a celebration. Remember that. It's a little formal. It feels a little formal, but we are celebrating you today. Not only for your academic achievements, but for your perseverance over the past year. We also welcome the students, family, and friends who are joining us virtually. <laughs> Wave to them as you walk across the stage. We are thankful that we could come together this year to celebrate your achievements. Congratulations to the class of 2021.
Good morning, class of 2021. I'm so grateful to be with you here today, even in these rather strange circumstances. But in the spirit of Meliora, we always strive to make any situation ever better. Unfortunately, because of COVID safety guidelines, we weren't able to invite guests to our, to our campus for your special day. I know this is a disappointment for you and your families. It's also a disappointment for me. In my two years as president, I have yet to preside over a traditional University of Rochester commencement, but this is my first University of Rochester commencement. I'm really relieved and delighted that we were able to bring you, your professors, and university staff together to celebrate this very special occasion. So with your families and friends in mind, I'd like to ask all 2021 graduates to stand and honor your families and friends who are watching online. Please give the people who supported you throughout your education a round of applause. We know how important their support has been on this journey. And even though we couldn't have them here today, they are definitely with us in spirit. Please feel free to be seated again. Although they couldn't be here today, there is something still quite special about this day, which you might come to appreciate over time, if not right now. And this unique commencement day can serve as a useful reminder of what you've overcome. As you depart this campus and embark on your careers and live your lives, whenever you think about this day, it should remind you how adaptable, resilient, patient, and creative you can be. And you should remember that during a year of great turmoil, you rose so successfully to the occasion. When the global pandemic forced us all to quarantine, curb our social interactions, and adopt social distancing and mask wearing. You adapted by figuring out how to take classes and study online when COVID severely restricted our mobility globally, nationally, and even on our campus. You showed creativity by using technology to further your education, to stay connected with family and friends, to shop, to do almost everything. And when circumstances challenge your ability to work on your coursework and research, you demonstrated patience and resilience. You dug deep and found inner resources you probably didn't know you had. Over these last three semesters, we've all endured historic challenges, but I believe that you have harnessed that adversity for fuel and you've overcome. And here you are graduating, stronger for it. As a psychologist, I'm familiar with research on stress and coping. And that research has shown that in many cases, stress often primes, prompts you to mine your inner reserves, face your problems, and sometimes you emerge having discovered new abilities. It's kind of a transformation or a positive change you can gain from struggling with a major life crisis or traumatic event and I would claim the last 14 months have been traumatic for all of us. You may have noticed some beneficial growth from these 14 months. Perhaps you have a greater appreciation for close relationships. Perhaps you have a greater appreciation for life, an awareness of new possibilities. Some people talk about increased spiritual enhancement, I myself have found a greater appreciation of nature throughout these 14 months. One way to think about it is this. If you can survive all of this and still graduate, you can do anything. That's no exaggeration. Many of you probably know other students, both here at the University of Rochester and at other universities, who paused their studies or dropped out altogether. You didn't do that. This University of Rochester class of 2021 figured out what you needed to do, how you needed to do it, and you got it done. You should take great pride in this. 
You've proven to yourself how adaptable you are. That kind of experience should endow you with the kind of confidence that leads to tremendous advances in science, culture, and governance to make the world an ever better place. As master's degree graduates of the University of Rochester, you've chosen to, to advance your knowledge and specialize in your chosen field of study. Whether you're, you're, you've attained an advanced professional degree, taken the next step in a lifetime of scholarship, or sought to become more proficient in your chosen profession, you will carry your unique life experiences, the enduring wisdom of this university, and the guiding light of our Meliora ideals. We all experience adversity in different ways, but as you face the many obstacles that lie ahead on your life's journey, because all lives have obstacles, I'm supremely confident that you have all you need to thrive. You flourished at the University of Rochester. You flourished during a global pandemic. And with your newfound strength, capabilities, and resolve gained from this year of COVID, I'm confident you will flourish in life. Congratulations, class of 2021. Good morning, everyone. I'm honored to be here today to celebrate the graduation of the master's candidates from Art Sciences and Engineering and the Medical Center. I join with our president, our distinguished deans, my fellow uh, faculty members, and your friends and family in saying congratulations to you all. You have reached a substantial goal in the face of the considerable adversity that this year of isolation and shuts down has forced upon us all. I only regret that your families can't be here in person, but I want to also say congratulations to them, for I know very well how important they have been in helping you reach this important milestone. Today, I want to touch on three topics, and the first of those is just this support. None of us have reached our current station in life without a lot of help from others. And we all have a story to tell. Many of you are leaving the academic life and entering the workforce, and some are continuing with your educational endeavors. But you're all engaged in writing the first chapters of your life story. In contrast, I'm leaving the workforce and undertaking retirement. So I'm writing the final, but hopefully not short, uh, last chapters of my life. Both of these are substantial changes and bear reflection and time to look back a bit, but also to look forward to the future. As I look back, I realize how fortunate I have been to have support at every stage and it has made all the difference. I was blessed to have parents who believed in education, even though due to circumstances they were barely able to finish high school. But I still remember my dad leaving the cows milking in the barn so that he could show me the Sputnik era uh, satellites streaking across the evening sky, at that time a considerable technology innovation. His enthusiasm for this was contagious and inspired my grade school self uh, to develop a curiosity and a lifelong learn love of science. This was further fueled by the opportunity to attend a summer-long science camp at the University of Kansas, which was promoted by a young assistant professor, Dr. Del Shankel, who went on to became, become the chancellor of KU. He selected school students from small rural high schools throughout Kansas and then added in uh, students from far-flung states, uh, California, New Jersey, uh, Tennessee. I learned a lot of science that summer, but I also learned that the peers 
with different backgrounds can greatly enlarge one's perspectives. It allowed me the courage to choose the University of California, San Diego for graduate school, a long ways from home. UC San Diego was an interesting place in the 1970s, um, but it was a place where I had the freedom to set my own course and literally to grow up. I was often outside my comfort zone, but found support largely from my fellow graduate students and the brilliant postdocs in the lab whose timely suggestions on a very difficult thesis project helped me uh, snatch victory which, from what could easily have been a, a sad defeat. As you reflect on your own educational experiences, think about who helped you hang in there when it all seemed a little bit hopeless. Who was willing to listen when you just needed an ear? And who celebrated with you when an experiment was successful or a study was completed. For each of you, it may be different people. A parent, a grandparent, a neighbor, a friend, an advisor, and probably your fellow students. To borrow from Mr. Rogers, let's all take 30 seconds to think of who those people are and how they shaped who you are and helped you get here today. I also realize that some of you may have lost one of these key persons during the last year, and if so, you have my sincere condolences. As you proceed to the next stages of your career, you will continue to need support. Don't hesitate to reach out to your peers for support and also to provide encouragement to them. When I first became dean, I was reviewing the budgets and thought that we spent a lot of money on social events. But I quickly realized that these events were extremely important in helping new students and postdocs to broaden their spheres of contacts and build the communities that were so essential for their success. We all need our peers to act as sounding boards and sometimes to set us straight. You will need this network at every stage of your careers, and similarly, you will be able to provide this same assistance to others. I can readily attest to the fact that providing such support will be as rewarding and advantageous to you as to those who receive your help. Give freely of yourselves. You will be richly rewarded. The second thing I would like to touch on are social inequities. This pandemic and the events of the last summer and, are, and the continuing events have certainly highlighted the underlying social inequity and systemic racism that has always existed in this country and also exists in science and in academia. When I was a graduate student, I had no role models as there was not a single female professor in the rather large Department of Biology at UC San Diego. Fortunately for me, things had improved somewhat from the times that Dr. Rita Caldwell, a renowned microbiologist, describes in her recent book, A Lab of One's Own, where she was told that the university was not going to waste a fellowship on a female. I did experience regional discrimination when I, as when I told a faculty member that I had graduated as an under, from an, the undergraduate college, University of Kansas, he said, oh, you must be from Kansas. That's the only reason anyone would go there. Now, I know these examples pale in comparison to the description, the discrimination that people of color have encountered, encountered in their educational endeavors. Nor do I tend to fully appreciate the problems they have faced. But I am encouraged that the University of Rochester and other similar institutions are making genuine efforts to increase the diversity of not only the student body, but also of the faculty. Because again, having role models is essential. But clearly much more work is needed by all of us to bring about the long overdue changes in our communities. I think it's imperative that we each incorporate public service and social responsibilities into our daily lives. It doesn't have to be one's career, but it does need to be a core value. I look forward to the time when our faculty lists, 
our senior leadership, and our boardrooms reflect the diversity in gender and race that exists in our population. It is essential that each of us refuses to tolerate the inequities and inequalities that are still all too prevalent in our society today. The chair of my department has a sign on his door that states, you encourage what you tolerate. It's a regular reminder to me that I can make a difference, perhaps a small, but a difference, by what I do and what I say and by speaking up when I should. My generation has not been as effective in seeing these disparities, much less doing something about them as we should have been. As dean, I heard from students who were hurting, feeling isolated and alone, and even being abused. I tried hard to assist those students, but realized that more work is needed to provide the environments that are inclusive for us all. As I move into retirement, I plan to use my skills and channel my volunteer efforts toward things that help those most in need. And I encourage each of you to put in the daily work that's necessary to affect real change. My third and final point I'd like to make is to find pleasure in what you're doing, both in your career and at home. I have been living and breathing tumor immunology research for the past 40 plus years. It's a very exciting time to be in this field as many new treatments for cancer are based on the years of basic research uh, that have shown the critical response of the immune system in the treatment of cancer. And it has brought about the monoclonal antibodies, the checkpoint inhibitors in the CAR T cells that in some cases are providing truly miraculous cures for patients with cancer. Just as with the vaccines for COVID-19, the many years of basic research have been the cornerstone in these scientific breakthroughs. Your careers will be rewarding in many ways, but don't forget to enjoy your life outside of work. Relatively early in my career, I became a single mom it was scary at the time, but my daughter did so much to help me keep perspective and has provided endless joy. She's truly the best experiment I ever did. And now things have come full circle. My daughter has a daughter, and I'm finding the same joy in watching her grow up. So I want to close by summarizing what I've tried to convey today. Enjoy the excitement of creating new knowledge. Share the high and low points with your colleagues. Be inclusive in inviting the participation of those from disparate backgrounds and pass your knowledge on to the next generation. There is no greater pleasure. I know that my tenure at the University of Rochester has, provide, has prepared me for an active and involved retirement and I'm equally confident that, the university, that your University of Rochester education has prepared you well to take on the challenges that you will face as you write the next chapters of your life story. Congratulations and best wishes to each of you. Thank you. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, if you're joining us online from somewhere to the east. Welcome to everyone, here and online, faculty, and staff, alumni, family, friends, and most importantly, graduates. It's an exciting day, and a strange one at the end of a very strange year. Many of you receiving master's degrees today have spent your entire graduate career in the throes of the COVID pandemic. That's a distinction for good or ill that will remain with you all your lives. You have achieved in spite of adversity and hardship, you have survived and even thrived. On behalf of all of us, congratulations. 
And with those congratulations, many thanks are due as well to members of the university's professional staff, for instance, who struggled with remote work and supported hybrid classes while in many cases shouldering significant new family obligations. But most especially to parents, families, and friends for sharing your graduates with us and for supporting them in their studies. Every graduate today is receiving a master's degree for some of you, this is just a milepost on the way to a doctoral degree. For most, it marks at least a temporary end to your formal education and your entry into the workplace. That's why they call it commencement after all. The rest of your life commences today. Your experiences after today will be very, very different. I'm told that about 14% of you are from the School of Medicine and Dentistry and more than 80% are from natural sciences or engineering departments on the River Campus. Only about 4%, apparently, are from the humanities and social sciences. While I am myself a computer scientist and clearly in the science and engineering camp, I'm here today to champion the humanists among us and the humanistic tendencies in all of us. Unlike the typical undergraduate degree, the master's is all about specialization. Most of you have taken 10 or 12 courses in your specific discipline or closely related fields. Some of you have done non-trivial research. You have all become masters of your disciplines, experts in your fields. Nonetheless, I want to talk to you today about generalization, about the classical liberal ideal the great naturalist E.O. Wilson is quoted as saying, we are drowning in information while starving for wisdom. The world henceforth will be run by synthesizers, people able to put together the right information at the right time, think critically about it, and make important choices wisely. Those people are liberals in the classical sense. The American Association for the Advancement of Science an organization, by the way, that I strongly recommend to all of you, defines a liberal education as, quote, one designed to produce people who are open-minded and free from provincialism, dogma, preconception, and ideology, who are conscious of their opinions and judgments, who reflect upon their actions, who are aware of their place in the social and natural worlds. Those are people you want to be. And journalist Fareed Zakaria recently wrote a book entitled In Defense of a Liberal Education. He proposes a bit more bluntly that a liberal education teaches you how to write, to speak, and to learn. Those are skills you want to have. And this probably sounds like advice I should be giving to first-year undergraduates, not to graduating MA and MS students. But consider this, you chose to attend a venerable, broad-based university, not a technical institute. You've had the opportunity, at least over the last few years, to rub elbows with colleagues in a wide variety of other disciplines. You probably had a fair amount of breadth in your undergraduate experience. You're about to enter a world that is full of diversity and that has enormous, pressing, complicated needs. That world is going to demand a lot of you. You could bury yourself in your work, ignoring all distractions, but while you might conceivably find happiness and fulfillment that way, it isn't very likely. Or you could take a job to make money and seek happiness and fulfillment elsewhere in your life. But would you truly be happy spending half your waking hours joylessly supporting the other half? Many of you have probably heard Frederick Buechner's famous definition of vocation. The short version is one of the most commonly quoted aphorisms in commencement speeches. The long version doesn't get used as often, probably because Buechner framed it in terms of Christian theology, but bear with me. Buechner writes, vocation comes from the Latin vocare, to call, and means the work a person is called to by God. There are all different kinds of voices calling you to all different kinds of work, and the problem is to find out which is the voice of God rather than of society, say, or the superego, or self-interest. 
By and large, a good rule for finding out is this. The kind of work God usually calls you to is the kind of work, A, that you need to do, and B, that the world needs to have done. If you really get a kick out of your work, you've probably met requirement A. But if your work is writing cigarette ads, the chances are you've missed requirement B. On the other hand, if your work is being a doctor in a leper colony, you have probably met requirement B. But if most of the time you're bored and depressed by it, the chances are you've not only bypassed A, but probably aren't helping your patients much either. Neither the hair shirt nor the soft birth will do. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. That last half a sentence is the part you usually hear quoted. And it translates beautifully to many other framings. The place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet is the place of integrity, of meaning, of self-fulfillment. You need to find that place. Bring to it your mastery, your expertise, your specialty. But don't expect it to be defined by that specialty. Expect it to be big and beautiful and complicated. Look for a job a job that makes good use of your skills, the skills we celebrate today, that makes a positive difference in the world, that brings you together with people whose values you share, but whose backgrounds and skills and perspectives are different from your own. A diversity of interests and of colleagues will make your work and your life more joyful and more impactful. So take what you've learned at Rochester Take it out into the world and keep on learning and exploring. Cultivate gratitude, curiosity, and an appreciation of diversity. Remember your time at Rochester. Come back and visit when you can. Support the cause of liberal education. Meliora. President Mangelsdorf, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Art, Sciences, and Engineering, I have the honor to present these candidates for the degree Master of Arts or Master of Science. Will all of the master's degree candidates from the School of Arts, Sciences, and Engineering please rise? The University of Rochester upon the recommendation of the Faculty of Art Sciences and Engineering, admits you to the master's degree for which you have been recommended, confers upon you all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree, and congratulates you for your considerable achievements. Please be seated. Will the master's degree candidates from the Schools of Arts and Sciences and Engineering please come forward to receive their diplomas? We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Biology, Giuseppina Emanuel. <laughs> Ishu Yao. Ray Zhang. <laughs> we
We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Biomedical Engineering, Anil Edha-Raparu. Arjun Ashak. <laughs> Suang Pil Bang. <laughs> John Kyle Cooper. Aaron Craig. <laughs> Catherine Gregory. <laughs> Andrew Hirsch. Mitchell Hosterman. <laughs> Fion La. <laughs> Jared Acasio. Christian Oveson. <laughs> Emily Palacio. <laughs> Charles Patterson. Samantha Ring. <laughs> Julia Schroth. <laughs> Nina Stash. Emma Vogan. <laughs> Regina Yu. <laughs> we will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Chemical Engineering, Riley Flower. Ryan Hader. <laughs> Hun Sum Alistair Lee. John Levito. Jean Ngozi Aguara. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Chemistry, William Girton, Vishal Tiwari. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Arts in Computational Linguistics, Hung Bin Ching. We'll now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Computer Science, 
Aylin Azadova. Gavin Baker. Michael Shavrimutu. Sinhoi Chen. Mingji Du. Hunlin Gao. Curtis Hout. Zhu Sheng Chi. Mohammed Ibrahim Kam. Chia Pung Lee. Richard Magnati. <laughs> Zhu Yi Pan. <laughs> Amir Tehran. Aaron Whitmer. Ji Yang. Jinhao Zhang. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Data Science, Moshiu Azam. Wade Bennett. Yu Hao, Pin Lee. <laughs> Ranak Mahalik, Genevieve Rowe. Shristi Singh. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Electrical Engineering, Ray Cheng. Jake Fox. Evan Lowe. Nargs Mohammadi. Luke Nash. David Plotkin. Sayed Samen Sabak Sire. Sardath Sartapith. Yep. Sardath 
Samuel Schachter. Shankai Shangguan. Shiyu Sun. Jinwen Wang. Oh. Bo Wen. Yu Zhang. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Arts in English. Leela Frank. <laughs> Amanda Hokiai. Kayla Metzger. Christina Pierce. Rachel Choi, Troy. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Arts in History, Brandon Packman. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Material Science, Yushuan Liu. Guaxian Ma. Qian Mu. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Noah Anderson. Timothy Schuler. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Sciences in Optics, Suniate Ahmed Chaudhuri, Jonathan Cobb, <laughs> Soundshi Du, Emma. Foley. <laughs> Ichian Gan. <laughs> Gregory Jenkins. Jiwan Zhang. <laughs> Joseph Lamando. Vitek Stefian. Christian Tolfa. <laughs> Zen Wang. Yiyun Wu. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Arts in Philosophy, Rebecca Stanzelow. 
We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Physics. Iram Nesli Erez. Shandema Meharangi Kumari Madai. Hannah Hansen. Alan Herrera. Robert Markwick. Long Wynn. We'll now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Political Science, Marcelo Guerra Gonzalez. Esgi Kibriz. We will now be presenting the graduates for the Master of Science in Technical Entrepreneurship and Management. Carlos Andreas Guzmanti Fernan Conca Fernandez. <laughs> Ting Yang Fang. Fusishuti Guru Prasad. Matthew Hood. Shamar Jackson. Tyler Neat. Grant Kravitz. Aaron Savage. Zichi Tan, Yutong Wang, and Kea Williams. Will all of the master's degree graduates from Art Sciences and Engineering please rise to be recognized by the audience. Please be seated. President Mengelsdorf, on behalf of the Faculty of School of Medicine and Dentistry, I have the honor to present the candidates for master's deg degrees, Master's of Arts, Master's of Public Health, and Master's of Science. Will all the master's degree candidates from the School of Medicine and Dentistry please rise? The University of Rochester, upon the recommendation of its faculty, admits each of you to the master's degree for which you have been recommended and confers upon you all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. We applaud you for your advanced accomplishments. Congratulations. Please be seated. 
Will the master's degree candidates from the School of Medicine and Dentistry please come forward to receive their diplomas? We will now be celebrating the candidates for Master of Arts degrees. Chao Yi Wu. We will now be celebrating the candidates for Master of Public Health degrees. Brooke Berry. Sarah Bird. Lauren Fowley, Lauren Ott, Grace Zimmerman, we will now be celebrating the candidates for Masters of Science degrees. Alzava Alvi. <laughs> Charlotte Bender. Kimberly Bogoas Vija. Natalie Janice Colon Torres. Jennifer Cope. <laughs> Brianna Di Luigi Cassandra Doyle Gabrielle Gable. <laughs> Gayathri Guru Morthri. <laughs> Emma Lenore House. Jacqueline Howitt, Kevin Jortinton, Gabriella Corsoy, Ian Kraut, Thomas Lam, Jaitong Lu, Kapao Lo, Ariana Lopez, Ferrelita Muder, Alyssa Merrill, Adrian Moises Molina Vargas, <laughs> Noah Pollack, Emily Cortato, Benjamin Schwab. Su Li Yi Shu, Tian Tu, Whoops. <laughs> Tian Tu, Radha Mulapenta, Tumulapenta, 
Jennifer Tardowski, Noel Vega, and C. Yi Young. Shannon Smith. Will the master's degree graduates from the School of Medicine and Dentistry please rise to be acknowledged by the audience? Please be seated. Given your talents, your intelligence and your education, you are now prepared for the next great chapters in your life. On behalf of us all in the University of Rochester community, I congratulate you on, on your remarkable academic achievements. Now we request that you please rise for our recessional march and remain in your places until the platform party has left the theater. Thank you for coming and congratulations again.
Talk throwing it again. 